Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace. This is part five of six on our series about the internet, which I'm sure you would agree is a huge topic. So we've broken it up into these six parts so everybody gets it a little bit better. We've talked a lot about the internet and how it works. We've talked about cyber war. We've talked about how packets of data will get from you to the internet and back again. We've even talked about who invented the internet. So make sure you watch our other episodes on that. Today we're gonna talk about something that's pretty commonly discussed when it comes to computing in the internet, and that is Moore's Law. Moore's Law is an observation made by Intel co-founder Gordon Moore. He made the observation in 1965, and he noticed the number of transistors per square inch on silicon chips had doubled every year since their invention. Transistors are little electrical switches that are inside of computers. Inside of the CPU is a bunch of transistors all jammed onto that chip, and they're used to represent zeros and ones in machine code and binary. Moore's law predicts that the number of transistors is going to continue to double for the foreseeable future. Not forever, but I'll come back to that. In an interview with the New York Times in May of this year, 86-year-old Gordon Moore said for the first 20 years, he could not utter the term Moore's Law. It was embarrassing. But this has proven to be a thing. This is something that people talk about when they talk about technology. When they say things like technology doubles every couple of years, that's Moore's Law. Intel CEO Brian Krasanich explained Moore's Law this way. If a 1971 VW Beetle had advanced at the pace of Moore's Law over the past 34 years, today you would be able to go 300,000 miles an hour, you would get 2 million miles per gallon, and all of that would cost 4 cents. <laughs> so is Moore's Law accurate? I mean, Moore didn't create it as a law. They just call it that. Moore never thought that his prediction would last 50 years. In fact, the original prediction looked at 10 years, which he thought was a stretch on its own. Moore's Law is suggesting that computers and technology will follow an exponential growth pattern, which is unlikely to continue indefinitely. And recently, the pace of transistors being packed into computer chips has slowed. The number of transistors per square inch has doubled approximately every 18 months, which is now the current definition of Moore's Law instead of much more often than that. It's not clear why Moore's Law applies to real life. In fact, it would seem that you would have an invention and then you would have something really cool happen so you'd get a spike, right? But that's not how it's been. It's been a pretty smooth curve upward. And that's strange, but nobody really knows why. Peter Denning, a computer scientist at the Naval Post Graduate School in California, says about this that science has mysteries, and in some ways Moore's Law is one of those mysteries, which is pretty cool. Most experts who look at Moore's Law and they look at the current pace of technology expect that this law is going to hold for another 20 years or so. Some studies show physical limitations of the number of transistors that can be crammed onto a computer chip. That limitation might be reached by 2017. But really though, does this even matter? With the incredibly fast growing pace of computing power, this has led to laptops that are pocket sized and gadgets that are so tiny they can fit on wrists and even smaller than that. And there's enormous processing power at pretty affordable price points, to be honest. I mean, just when we keep hitting a wall, an another way is found to compress transistors into smaller spaces. Or a whole new wave of computing comes upon us, like quantum computing, which people are working on right now, which would reduce the size of computers to the size of atoms. But how does Moore's law affect the internet, right? This is a whole series about the internet. Does the internet get upgraded as Moore's law moves? Of course it does. We're accessing the internet with images in a way that they couldn't have even imagined in the 60s and 70s. We're using pictures and video. We're getting live images from places using the internet. And that's because Moore's law has allowed it to be upgraded. But when it comes to the internet and Moore's law and technology getting better and things like that, a lot of people start talking about net neutrality. It's been a hot topic for a few years, maybe you've heard of it. But the basis for that whole debate can be traced back to the Telecommunications Act of 1996. That act gave the FCC the authority to classify internet service providers or ISPs as a public utility, similar to phone companies. They didn't do that, but they could have. If they had done that, it would give the FCC broad powers to control some of the more predatory business models that ISPs sometimes use to decrease competition. The battle that they had more recently with net neutrality 
was basically over whether or not it should be okay for ISPs to be able to charge a company for better or faster bandwidth to their sites. So because so many people are using Netflix during prime time of the internet usage, it was using so much of the internet's bandwidth that Netflix was being charged by Comcast for that. And that seemed not okay for a lot of people. They paid Comcast, they paid Netflix, they should access whatever they want. That's net neutrality. By them charging, that was eliminating smaller companies from competing with Netflix, because Netflix could, could afford to pay this price to Comcast. In June of 2014, John Oliver's fantastic show last week tonight on HBO raised awareness which caused the FCC comment section on their website to crash as people expressed their interest in regulating ISPs like you regulate a public utility. And in February of 2015, the FCC reclassified broadband companies as telecommunication services, putting an end to these throttling practices and these two different speeds of internet service that you'd have to pay to access the fast one. These predatory practices were done. Theoretically, <laughs> because, of course, the government moves pretty slow and change is still in the works. So we're going to see what this will cause in the future. It's pretty clear that the world has changed since the Internet has risen. Paying bills, meeting new people, basically everything that we used to do out here in meat space, we can now do online. And before we had to wear pants and now we don't have to wear pants. So that's kind of awesome. But what about hackers? What are the dangers of the future of the internet and all of that information being online? Can't hackers just get it all? Well, you'll have to find out tomorrow when we talk a little bit more in our final episode about the internet. We mentioned Moore's Law and Gordon Moore at the top of this, by the way. He was obviously a computing pioneer. He was also a founder of our sponsor, Intel. Intel drives innovation with products like processors and wearables and Internet of Thing devices and even within data centers. In the PC, and beyond. So a big thank you to them for sponsoring our show, Test2 Plus, and helping us get these videos to you. If you would like to see more of Test2 Plus, make sure you subscribe and keep coming back here every day. Let us know down in the comments if you have tips for your fellow Test2 Plus watchers on how to not get hacked, because that's kind of a big deal. Or maybe if you've ever used the deep or dark web before, tell us about that experience. There's really no way that we wouldn't want to talk to you down in the comments, so make sure you do that. And thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.